Hi, it's Lucy and today we're here to do my November wrap up. So in November I read nine books and in an attempt to catch up with my yearly TBR I read three of the books off of that TBR. So now I am not quite caught up but getting there. We'll see what happens in December. All of the books that I'm going to be talking about are listed in the description box below. So if you want to skip the first part of the video and just get to the books, the timestamps will be down there for each individual book. I like to take the first part of my wrap ups to talk a little bit about like how my month was. So yeah, if you don't care about me, then you can skip ahead. Some of the interesting stuff that I did in November, I went to a Jesse Reyes concert. If you don't know who that is, that's okay, but she's really great. You should look her up. And also in November, I went to Europe. I went to two countries. I went to the Czech Republic and I went to England. I went to Prague in the Czech Republic and I went to Norwich and London in England. I already have a vlog of Prague or up on my channel if you're interested in seeing like some of the clips I took and there will be a vlog of just like England as a whole and that should be up soon if it's not already up. November is also when Thanksgiving happens. So that happened. I got to see my family. It was a nice time. And technically this happened in December, but I'm saying it here because I feel like it. I was featured in Ari, also known as RK Gold's Shout Out Saturday series, where he like shout outs different people on the YouTubes, mostly booktube, but not everyone. Yeah, it's me. It's like a podcast format. So it's just me and him having conversation. It was really fun. Shout out to him. This is literally a shout out to him, but like go watch that episode and go watch the rest of the series. And yeah, this is kind of me tooting my own horn, but if you're ever interested in like learning more of my thoughts and like stuff that I don't always get to talk about on this channel, then we talk about some of that in that. So yeah, go check it out. And last but not least, take my channel survey, just slipping this in here. I haven't put it in any of my videos recently, but I am running a survey. It's like a Google doc and you just have to answer questions. You don't have to, but like, it would be really nice if you answered questions based on my channel and like, so I can improve for the new year. And I just got the worst foot cramp of my life somehow. I don't know how I got it sitting, but it's fine. All the questions are optional. So if you don't feel comfortable answering any of them, you can, you're free to not do that. But all the questions are anonymous. So please, please, please be as honest as possible. And I really appreciate your feedback. So now let's go into the books. Like I said, there are nine books, so this video is going to be quite long. First, I read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. I listened to the audiobook, which was read by Stephen Fry. This is a sci-fi novel, pretty old, well-known. It follows a human who gets taken by an alien off the Earth minutes before it's about to be destroyed for an interstellar highway. His alien friend, who he didn't know was an alien until they leave the Earth, is Ford Prefect, who is working on the revised edition of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah, so it's just about their adventures after leaving the Earth. This was a fun romp. I can see why a lot of people like it. It didn't really wow me, but I think I may have built it up in my head a little bit, so that could be a factor. I expected it to be kind of funnier, I guess, but it was just kind of weird, but like not in a bad way weird. I think if you like Welcome to Night Vale, you will probably enjoy this at least a little bit. And also if you like this, you should try out the podcast slash books slash lots of things called Welcome to Night Vale. I enjoyed reading it, but this is a six book series and I just don't think I want to commit to that. So I don't think I'll be continuing on. And I'd also like to point out that this book predicted Kindles. So that's cool. And yeah, I gave this three and a half stars. Next, I finished Life Like by Jay Kristoff. I received an e-arc of this via NetGalley in exchange for an honest review, which is what I'm doing here. And also my Goodreads review was there. This is a futuristic dystopian where the world kind of is becoming a junkyard kind of thing, where either the world or the country ends up kind of controlled by two companies, one that's focused on a future with like bioengineering and another focused on like machinery engineering. We follow a girl named Eve who lives in the scrap which is kind of a junk filled island. It was, I think it's supposed to be like California after it gets separated, you know, by that earthquake that's supposed to separate California from the rest of us. It's kind of a wasteland and it's just an island full of people who have nowhere to go and nowhere to be. And so Eve does robot gladiator fights in order to try and make some money so that she can keep getting medicine for her grandfather. And then she has two companions, her like robot friend and her human friend named Lemon Fresh. 
And then like during this, she stumbles upon a different kind of robot that's supposed to be like discontinued and destroyed. And so she finds it and it kind of follows what happens after that happens because clearly that is the inciting event. I watch a lot of writing vlogs. This was a bit hard for me to get into, but once I got in, I was in. It had some interesting twists and turns and was action packed and it really kept me interested and learning what's going on with the story. And I did care about the characters, which is always a plus. I would have appreciated a little more world building as you could see with like my summary I wasn't even sure of some things so like if that was a little more fleshed out we are just kind of thrown into the world and the people in the world already know what's going on so there's no one really there to explain it to you and I also would have appreciated a little more examination to how the world got to where it did because like I said it's like a future with like two massive corporations and yeah I just want like what was the inciting event for that that would be nice to know it might might come in future books although I'm not sure that's what the series is about so it might not. Like I said I cared about the characters but I did think the main character acted kind of dumb a lot of the time like a lot of the time. Sometimes characters are dumb in a way that's consistent with their character but then sometimes they're dumb in a way that doesn't really seem consistent and she was kind of dumb in a way that didn't seem consistent with her character and the book brought up a lot of interesting ideas about AI and artificial intelligence. And in the end, this was a fun action-packed read. I'm really glad I read it. I gave it four stars. I will be continuing on in the series and I look forward to continuing on. Pride by Ibi Zaboy. This is a Pride and Prejudice retelling featuring our main character, Zuri Benitez, who's a half Dominican, half Haitian American teen living in Brooklyn, New York in present day as the neighborhood is getting gentrified and she's not happy about it. So when the wealthy Darcy family moves in across the street, she's really not happy about it, even as her sister Janae is getting closer to the older son and she wants nothing to do with the younger son. And because this is a Pride and Prejudice retelling, you know where this is going. This was super adorable and almost everything I would have wanted out of a Pride and Prejudice retelling. I loved all the references to Pride and Prejudice because Pride and Prejudice is my favorite classic, one of my favorite books of all time and I just appreciated any like Easter eggs, even the names are there, but it doesn't depend so heavily on Pride and Prejudice that it's not its own story. It's still its own story and you could definitely read this without having read Pride and Prejudice and you would be fine, but the Pride and Prejudice elements are there for those of us who are like me and love Pride and Prejudice. The romance was just as cute as the original, in my opinion. The backdrop of being in Bushwick with all the people in the neighborhood and like their descriptions were vivid and vibrant. It feels like you're one of the neighbors. I love Zuri's family and I loved how close they were as a family and how that was shown in the story. My only issue was with Darius, who is the love interest. I didn't like how Zuri treated him sometimes in regards to him being like bougie, I guess. Don't get me wrong, in this book, Darius is classist as the original Darcy was and he was disrespectful but he was called out on it and he did apologize but Zuri is also kind of prejudiced against him and kept treating him and kind of telling him that he wasn't black enough based on how he grew up and like what he like does and that was never really called out which really disappointed me. I guess since I'm more of a Darius in terms of background that was really disappointing to me because that is something that like happens where people were like oh you're not black enough because you like didn't grow up this way so I did find that disappointing but overall I still thought this was a cute story that the romance was cute and I would still recommend it. Okay so now we have my favorite book that I read this month. Probably my favorite book of the year, unless something really blows me out of the water in December. And that book was Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. I don't have a physical copy, but I might get a physical copy and like annotate it or something. This was definitely the best book of the month. I gave it five stars. This has like taken over like the world kind of in regards to YA new releases, but this is a YA fantasy inspired by Nigerian mythology. It takes place in the land of Orisha, was once prominent, and those who could use magic were called magi, and the children who aren't yet able to use magic are called diviners. The magi and those who couldn't use magic were constantly at war in this land until one day where magic disappeared and the king who was not a magic user took advantage of that day to kill all of the magi. And so we follow a diviner named Zele 11 years later who ends up getting caught in a plan to bring magic back along with her brother and a runaway princess while being chased by the crown prince who's hell bent on stopping them. Hopefully I did that synopsis justice. Hopefully it makes you want to read the book because I loved it as I keep saying. I don't know how to like explain my love for this book. I literally couldn't put it down and I cried on an airplane. 
in public. I will admit it, I was one of the naysayers. I really thought, how good could it be? It turns out it could be that good. Almost every aspect of this book was perfect, except for one thing. Even though the thing did bother me, I really just wanted to give this five stars. Like sometimes, especially when I'm reading, when I give five stars, it's just like a feeling. And even though this part, I could see why a lot of people would not want to give it five stars because this, it just, everything else about the book was so good that I couldn't let it detract. Like, that's how strong the book was. But the one part that I didn't like was a romance between Zelle and another character. A lot of people have said stuff about it. I didn't find it to be believable and it was pretty insta-lovey. If it had happened over a longer period of time, like say if this had happened in the second book or if this book had taken place over a longer period of time because it takes place over the course of around a month. If either of those things happened, then I feel like I would have been behind it. But since it took place in such a short amount of time, I just didn't feel believable and was insta-lovey. But like I said, everything else about the book was perfect. The book is action-packed. It kept me guessing at every turn. There, I did not guess any of the plot twists going on in it. It had varied and complex characters. The writing was so good. Like I said, I cried. Um, while reading this and there are so many lines that I just I I want to like tab up that's why I want a physical copy to like annotate not to mention that the representation in this was something I didn't know I needed so I'm so happy this book exists in the world for 14 year olds who look like me and I'm eagerly awaiting the sequel <laughs> The camera angle probably changed because I literally moved it. So hopefully the angle's better. I'm not gonna check because that would be smart. We're just gonna continue. So next we have If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo. After reading Children of Blood and Bone, I wanted something a little more lighthearted, which I thought this was. I was wrong. Not to say it wasn't good, but I just, I wanted something more lighthearted. Like I said, I cried like multiple times during Children of Blood and Bone. So yeah, this one also brought me two tears. <laughs> It's kind of hopeful, I guess, but like it's not like a happy-go-lucky story. I don't know why I thought it was. This was an unexpectedly powerful story. It's about a trans girl who deals with a variety of traumatic events. Most of the traumatic events are told in flashback, but they're still like told. So there is a trigger warning for depression, suicide, and transphobia. And like I said, this is about a trans girl named Amanda who ends up moving in with her dad in a new city after her transition so she can have a fresh start. And at her new school, she meets a boy and she's starting to make new friends and she struggles with whether or not to like tell them about herself. Like I said, there's a boy and this is a contemporary, so there's like romantic element and the romance was cute. I thought it was a bit insta-lovey, but I, it was whatever. I thought the writing was a bit stilted at times, but it didn't really bother me. I love seeing Amanda grow throughout the course of the book and even like you see her from her flashbacks and like what she's doing present day and like you i just liked seeing her become into the girl slash woman that she became i thought her friends were like a fun group like the new people she meets and i thought they were developed well enough and i enjoyed having them in the story and i enjoyed amanda's relationship with them and her love interest and her relationship with her parents i liked seeing all of that develop yeah i enjoyed reading this i gave it four stars and overall i think the author accomplished what they were trying to accomplish which was to give a window into a possible trans experience little monsters by kara thomas this is about casey who moves in with her dad and his family after having a big fight with her mom and in her new town she becomes a part of a close friend group which is why it's odd when they go to a party and don't invite her and then the next day one of the friends goes missing and it's about what happens after that them trying to find the friend this is like a mystery thriller and overall i thought it was a decent read i did not predict how it was going to end so that's always good in my book i thought the characters were kind of annoying and if you've watched riverdale then the main character really reminds me of betty and her whole like dark betty thing the main character really reminded me of that i enjoyed the process of reading it and like trying to find out all the twists and turns and like what happened to her friend i also really like the found slash adopted family aspect with her like new family because she didn't really know her dad's family before moving in she didn't really know her dad either and then the way they like embraced her i really liked their relationship through that but i wasn't a huge fan of how like their relationship like ended by the end of the book i ended up giving this i didn't write down the star rating but probably four stars maybe three and a half brown girl dreaming by jacqueline woodson this is woodson's memoir ish type book of her childhood growing up in south carolina and new york and it's told in verse this is my first book 
by Jacqueline Woodson, who I know like is a very popular writer, and I don't have too much to say about it. It is told in verse, so it's very short, and I listened to it on audiobook, which was read by her. I enjoyed reading the story and just like learning about her life just because I thought it was interesting, and I liked that it was told in verse. I thought it was beautifully written, but none of the lines really spoke to me, which is kind of what I want out of like poetry. The poem called Ribbons was hashtag relatable to me because it's about hair ribbons, and that was a dark time in my life. And overall, if you're interested in Woodson or her life, then I would recommend this. I gave this three and a half stars. And the last book that I read in November was The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter. I finally did it. I finally read The Raven Boys. I gave it four stars. This is super duper hyped. You have probably heard of this, but you probably don't know what it's about because no one ever says what it's about because no one can explain it. And like, I can't really explain it, but I will attempt to. So this follows a girl named Blue who's mother is a psychic and they live with her mother's two friends who are also psychics and they run like a psychic business like like tarot readings and stuff while blue herself isn't psychic she can amplify other psychic abilities and because she's grown up around psychics she's always been told that if she ever kisses her true love he will die at the same time we follow the raven boys who are a group of four boys from the local private school and they are on a search for ley lines and they're led by their ringleader Gansey whose name probably sounds familiar if you've heard anything about this book. What are ley lines? They're apparently like energy something. I could not explain that to you but yeah that's the basic gist and then the two groups converge at some point because of the ley lines and because of blue and stuff happens and like the book is like about their convergence. I like this as I expected I would like it. I do tend to enjoy character driven stories and this is character driven. A lot of people are like oh there's no plot. I thought there was like a little bit of a plot but it is definitely more character driven. I liked reading about Blue's family because her mom and her two friends are like her family basically. I really like adopted families is like what I've learned. The boys like friendship with each other is like another kind of found family thing. And so I like their relationship. It's like a close friendship with like teenage boys and you don't really read a lot about that in YA or really in anything. And so I really like that. A lot of people I know complain that it's too confusing and I didn't really find it that confusing except for like the last 50 pages, which I had to read twice <laughs> because that gets more into like the magic stuff. So it's not super like fleshed out. There was one thing that was kind of weird to me. It's in my Goodreads review under a spoiler if you're interested or you can ask me in the comments down below. Overall, I have a lot of questions the way this ended I would have thought could have been drawn out over the rest of the book so I literally have no idea where the rest of the books are going so I'm intrigued to read them. I know the next book follows Ronan who wasn't my like favorite character but he also wasn't really my least favorite. I didn't mind him. I'm looking forward to reading that but yeah I'm glad I finally took the plunge and read this book. If you haven't already and you like character driven stories then I would recommend it. So those are all the books I read in November. This wrap up was really long I think or it might not be. Maybe I just said mostly garbage and I cut it all out so it wasn't that long. We'll find out when it gets posted. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel because I make more videos where I talk about books and hit the bell icon so you can get notified every time I post a video. In the comments down below, let me know what was your favorite book that you read in November and let me know if you've read any of these books or if you have an opinion about any of the books that I read please leave that in the comments down below as well don't forget to take my channel survey so thank you so much for watching I'll see you in my next video bye we follow a girl named Evie Eve nope I guess since I'm more of a Dar Darius Darius or if you have oh my god my foot cramp again